So today I'd like to introduce you to some very special three-dimensional shapes, polyhedra. And in particular, I'm going to start with the cube, sometimes called the hexahedron. Hex meaning six, and this is the six-sided regular uh, shape that we call one of the platonic solids. Now, Plato had written in his book Timaeus about these five platonic solids. He wasn't the first person to have discovered it. But let me ask you, what is special about the cube? Well, one of the things you could say is there's no top or bottom. That would be very different, for instance, than a cylinder or a pyramid where there's a clear top and bottom. Any of the faces could be the top or bottom. All the faces are regular, in this case squares, and each of the faces is the same, and the points are all the same. So these are some of the properties of all of the platonic solids. I'm showing you one of them here. The other one is that the angles at which all of the faces come together are the same. So what I'd like to show you here is a little model that I made, and this is a cube, and we're gonna look inside it. And what I have inside this cube, interestingly, is a tetrahedron that sits inside, and the tetrahedron has inside of it an octahedron. This little octahedron sitting inside the cube, just like this. And this relationship between, in this case, the cube and the octahedron is called duality. The octahedron is the dual of the cube. One of the ways of looking at that is to think, well, the cube has eight vertices, eight points, and six faces, and the octahedron is the other way around. It has eight faces and six points. So here's another picture of the octahedron, a little bit larger this time. Well, what other solids might we get out of triangles? You might ask yourself that. Well, the most basic of all is the tetrahedron, four triangles. There you see it. So we can produce a platonic solid that, again, has that perfect symmetry. All the faces are regular triangles, equilateral triangles. All the points are the same, and um, the dihedral angles are all the same. Well, what else could we do? Well, it turns out we yet have another possibility for a platonic solid with just triangles, and we have to get quite a few more. 20 triangles, this is called the icosahedron. 20 triangles, quite a remarkable shape. But there's one shape that's, I think, the most remarkable of all. It's not surprising to us because we're so familiar with it that we can use squares to produce one of these special shapes. We can use triangles and to get three different forms, but the pentagon, quite surprisingly, also works. And this is the dodecahedron, 12 pentagons, quite remarkable. With all five of these platonic solids, they have what properties? This special, we would call it three-dimensional symmetry. It doesn't matter which the top is. Any of them could serve at the top, as the top. They have all of the points are the same. All of the faces on every single face of this is exactly identical. And the faces are regular. And the dihedral angles, those angles form from one face coming to another along that edge. All the dihedral angles are the same. Now that I've introduced you to these platonic solids that we see here with their special properties, what we're going to do is transform them into different shapes. And I'm going to start with the cube. And you may have wondered why it was colored in in this way. Well, I'm going to take these red points that we see, and I'm going to imagine that the whole thing was made of clay, and we're going to push in those red points. And if we do so, I think you can see that we will get this. So now we have six octagons and eight small triangles. And if we imagine those red triangles to grow a little bit more, we get this shape that we see here. And if I continue in this fashion, it becomes a little bit trickier at this point. How are these red triangles going to grow even further? Well, they'll be transformed into hexagons, and we get this. And now what's going to happen if I complete this whole process, I'm going to imagine that these red hexagons are going to grow even more and these small yellow squares will shrink down to points. And of course, that's what will give us the octahedron in the end. That's the culminating process. So we started with the cube. Of course, we got the dual, the octahedron. 
starting with six squares, six faces, and eight points, and we end up with eight faces and six points. And so now what I would like you to do is, in your own imagination, pause the video if you wish, and see if you can go through the same process with the dodecahedron and with the tetrahedron. What's going to happen if you do that? So I'll show you the process here with the dodecahedron. At first, we get very small triangles at each of the corners. And then the next, we end up with, it's kind of a mix of the dodecahedron and the icosahedron, whereby what is happening here um, is that you have 12 pentagons and 20 triangles. And then the next one is, of course, what some people would say is a soccer ball or a football. I say, well, if you're going to go outside and play ball, you can play with a what is called a truncated icosahedron. And so there is the transformational process that you have going from the dodecahedron to the icosahedron. Now we're going to do the same thing with the tetrahedron. So we started out here with four blue triangles and four points. If we push in just a little bit, then we will end up with this. So now we have orange triangles that appear there. And if we have those orange triangles grow just a little bit more, surprisingly, we don't end up with anything new. Ah, this is the proper orientation here. This is, of course, once again, the octahedron coming out of the tetrahedron. And if we allow the orange to become larger, it will become a hexagon. And so we have that shape here. Um, the orientation is here. Ah, there we are. And then lastly, of course, if we allow the blue triangles to shrink down even further, then we will end up with this. So indeed, how many new shapes did we produce from the tetrahedron? Well, not many, did we? In fact, only one because we ended up, the tetrahedron became the tetrahedron, right? Which is that idea of dual. Again, the cube, the dual of the cube is the octahedron. The dual of the dodecahedron, I didn't say that before, but I will now, is the icosahedron. 12 faces, 20 points. It says 20 faces, 12 points. Of course, the tetrahedron has four faces and four points, so it is self-dual and it would be nice if that would stand up right like that, but we'll go with that. And the only new shape that we got is here. So I'll put that there. And of course, we're trying to produce some new things. I'll have those things go away now. And now I'm going to go through a different process. And I'm going to imagine here that this is going to expand. Well, let's imagine it this way. Sometimes it's called exploding. And so I'm going to take these octagons, move them away from the center. They'll stay the same shape, but they'll move away from the center. And these triangles will transform into hexagons. And when we do that, we'll have squares that will also appear along the edge. And so this is the new shape that we get from that. So again, each of the red triangles became hexagons, and then blue squares appeared where the edges were. I'll put that down there. So that's a new one altogether. What happens if I do that for this shape here? Well, in that case, we just get this. And what would happen if we expanded this in the same way? Well, it turns out if you think through it, you have to really carefully think about what's going to happen here. If you do that, you will get the same as when we started from here. So now I'm going to do a very strange thing. And now I'm going to imagine this, if you can. We can imagine that the only thing that is solid are the yellow squares from this shape here. Well, the only thing that's solid are the yellow squares. And everything else, we can say it's just surrounded by this flexible wrapping of sorts. And if all of the yellow squares turn, and they're going to turn clockwise very slightly, we get one of the most surprising shapes of all. And this is called the snub cube. There are very interesting names for all of these shapes. And this is quite surprising, isn't it? All these squares have just been twisted from what we had there. And 
Oops, your bishop is to the dust. And this is called the snub cube. We have all of these sort of triangles all the way around, very surprising here. So now, of course, I'm gonna invite you to do the same process that we did here to produce these three. What would happen if instead we were working over in the uh, dodecahedron, icosahedron group over here? What will we get coming out of these just like we did here to get these, what will happen if I transform these in a similar way? And so that's what we see here. So very much similar to the snub cube. This is called the snub dodecahedron. And some of these names are quite amazing. We have the, the small rhombi cube octahedron and the great rhombi cube octahedron. And this is called the small dodeci icosahedron. No, the... <laughs> It's the small rhombi dodeca icosahedron, I believe. Anyway, amazing names with all of these. So now what I'd like to do is just to pause here and look, what do we have? We have 13 solids on these two rows right here. And these are different than the platonic solids. How so? Each of these have two different faces, two different kinds of faces, all 13 of these. So that's the first thing that we notice. Well, but what do they have? Which of the properties of the platonic solids do they share? Well, each of the points are the same. So for instance, with this one, every point is surrounded by two hexagons and a square. Yeah, this one here, every point is surrounded by four triangles and one square. And these are called the Archimedean solids, these 13 Archimedean solids. The other thing we can say is the faces, just like the platonic solids, are all regular. Regular meaning equilateral triangles, the quadrilaterals are all actually squares, and the pentagons and the hexagons are all regular as well. So now what I would like to do is introduce you to one more transformational process, and that is what I call popping out the faces or growing pyramids off each of the faces. And so if we look at this cube here, I've very intentionally shown a yellow dot at the center of the face. And I'm going to imagine that a pyramid is going to rise out of this face here and out of each of the faces all at the same time. Can you see what shape you would get if you did that? Let me show you. And there we go. Let me balance it there. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is something very important. I'm going to have the pyramids grow just a little bit more until this triangle here merges with this triangle here. And then what we get, which we see here, is just rhombuses, 12 rhombuses. There were 24 triangles here, and now we have 12 rhombuses. This is called the rhombic dodecahedron. Dodeca, again, meaning 12. It's the rhombic dodecahedron. The other amazing thing is I could have actually come from the other direction. Picture this. What would have happened if I started here with the octahedron and I grew pyramids, triangular-based pyramids, off each of those faces? Can you see that this is what you would get? And if we took that further and allowed those little triangular pyramids to grow a little bit taller, then you would once again get the rhombic dodecahedron. And now what I want to do is I want to pay attention to the idea that these are different solids. They're not regular. These are not squares, they're rhombuses. And the points are not all the same, but the faces are all the same. 12 identical rhombuses, 24 identical triangles, 24 identical triangles here, but certainly different than, than the other one that we had. And now I want to look at this and pay attention to the idea of duality. This has a dual. And this here has every single one of these yellow faces has eight edges around it. And what is the dual of a solid that has faces with eight edges around it? Well, it turns out to be a solid that has 
points where eight edges are coming to it. So for every face that has eight edges around it, there must be a point with eight edges coming to it. What about the red triangles? Well, those triangles have three edges around it, and therefore it's dual. It must have points with three edges coming to it. So the dual of this is this. So I'm going to put it here to line it up there. So now I'd like to talk about what is the dual of this one. So if we look at this, well, every single point, I'll start with points in this case, has four edges coming to it. So its dual must have faces with four edges around it. And that's what we see here with the rhombic dodecahedron. And so if you look at this and study it a little bit more, you can see that these two are duals of each other. And lastly, what is the dual of this? Well, these two are duals themselves. And I'll try to line this up properly. There you go. So I think what I'm now going to do is I'm going to show you all the rest of the duals. So each of these 13 solids that we see here, the 13 Archimedean solids, have duals, and those are called the Archimedean duals, sometimes called the Kepler solids. And these Archimedean duals have different properties. Let's just look at actually, let me show you the rest of the duals now. And you may want to try to pause the video and see if you can picture what all the rest of the duals would be. I showed you the duals of these three, or these three, but what would the duals of these look like? And how about all of those? So here they all are. These are the 31 models that I have my students experience. The five platonic solids in the top row, the next two rows are the 13 Archimedean solids, and then these last two rows down here are the 13 Archimedean duals. And I lined them up so that the dual are all in the same position, but just down two rows. And the same thing over here. What can we say again for the 13 Archimedean solids? Their points are all the same and the faces are all regular. For the 13 Archimedean duals, the faces are all identical, but not regular. And the dihedral angles are all the same. One way of thinking of the dihedral angles, if I look at the rhombic dodecahedron, it doesn't matter if I'm skiing, I like ski analogies somehow. If, I'm, if I come off this flat surface here, it doesn't matter which edge I go off, it's equal steepness. The dihedral angles are all the same and the faces are all the same. Some extraordinary shapes, many of them very surprising, and many of them have very complicated names. This is the hexakis icosahedron has 120 triangular faces. Um, this is the pentagonal hexacontahedron. Just fabulous, beautiful shapes. And I hope that you enjoyed what I showed you here. And here we have all of these wonderful models. And oh, by the way, I did choose one of these to make into a house, but that's the topic for another video. Thank you for being with us.